start training that, and, and I work with people like Blake Holland uh, from Oshawa, Ontario, and they understand these theories, all it is is going to the pool table and taking 15 or 30 minutes a day and practicing these things. Mm. And that's why the new breed of pool players coming up are, are marvelous players, because they have a better understanding. See, for years, I'll get back to the bad image with this, make a long story short, as Minnesota Fat says. The reason why this had a bad image about this is because there has been a misrepresentation of this game. Men have dominated the game and not allowed, A, the family to come. They should have brought the family in. Mm. We'll say, like, in our family, our, our parents should have brought us into the pool room. Mm. And B, the men dominated the sport, and they, made, they had such eagles about this sport that no one could tell them. They pocketed a couple of balls and they felt they were great pool players. Well, that's ridiculous. Why didn't they seek out another professional pool player, get some lessons, and then... Uh, and that's the way you, you went down and had that's lessons? That's the way. When I moved to Manhattan, New York, yeah. in the early parts of 70, that's what I did. I sought out the best players that, that I knew about. Jimmy Karras, Irving Crane, William Moscone, Minnesota Fats, some of these other players that you see now, Steve Mesrak, and spent hours with them see, taking lessons. When them. I think, oh, okay, you go down and take lessons, and you, you had to hang out in all these different places to learn something. You have mm -hmm. to keep watching. And I always think of a dark, or a very dumb, dim lit right. room with, filled with smoke and, you know, like drinking or could be drugs in the background or whatever. That's, that's the impression I get again, you know. And, um, well, mainly because of the movies, I suppose. Movies that they've shown yeah, things like that You know, that now there's very few pool rooms. Wherever I travel now, across the uh, United States specifically, and my market is a lot in the United States, New York and Richmond, Washington, Phoenix, Beverly Hills, Atlantic City, Las Vegas. Uh, the market has changed. Now, when I moved to 70, I knew See, there was two reasons why I had to leave Belvoir area. I need to get out of they my own. No. no, no, I had to get out of my environment, and I had to reach into a new environment mm -hmm. where to bring the proper media sponsors and people to introduce them to this game, and I needed to do that. If I could have done it here, staying in Belvoir, I would have done it. But I had to go there and meet people like Charles Revson's son, John Revson, mm -hmm. who's the heir of Revlon. But what, what made you really want to uh, go into something like that rather than going to a normal job? Well, I can't explain that to you mm -hmm. in words. It's more like, it, I it's suppose... It's a calling. Yeah. See, I was, I was involved in the ministry and involved uh, in participation in people's lives, caring and sharing and helping people. But I have realized that this has been my gift in life. This has been my call. This has been my ministry, if I can use that word and not be mm -hmm. misunderstood. I mean, look at the people around here. I care about these people. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be here. Plus, I wouldn't share my time with them or my talent. But mm. this is what, it's like a drawing force keeps me doing it. And I try to get away from it and it keeps drawing me back to it. Mm. And it's doing good things, you know? Mm. I mean, look at these people. You know they stand around for hours. I've been <laughs> in all kinds of sports and you can't get people away from the pool table. Okay, we're gonna do a shootout here with Audrey Christopher. We're gonna play a little nine ball. Do you want me to break them up or you? Yeah, you do. Okay, break them up. We're gonna attempt to make the nine ball in the break. And the way you do that is I hit the cue ball in the middle, bullseye. So we cut this up like a clock. Instead of saying English, high English, low English, we cut up like a clock. One o'clock, seven o'clock, nine o'clock. So I'm gonna hit this bullseye and hit the object ball in the middle, which is full ball. If I hit it to the right, it's three quarter ball. If I hit the edge of the object ball, it's half ball, quarter ball, and thin ball. So basically, there's only five places to hit, hit the uh, object ball. Here we go. Okay, we got a little motion going here, Audrey. I have pocketed which ball went down? The three ball went in. Okay, I'm going to pocket the one and come back for the two. Okay, now my opponent has a chance to pocket the yellow ball. Yeah. Oh boy. That was an excellent shot. Wasn't a bad shot. What I did there was I, I had to make a legitimate shot was I had to hit the one ball first. And then if the one ball hits another ball in the pocket, Mrs. Dayful, are you listening to this? Can I have your, it's not very often I get to Belleville. 
Some of my in-laws. Mrs. Dayful. From down where I was born. Okay, so anyways, I pocket the one ball into the five ball. The five went in the side. Now I'm going to carry on here. I'm going to attempt to make the yellow ball and go into the money ball here, which is the nine ball. If you pocket the nine, you win. So I'm going to go after the nine also. No, but that was a good shot. Because if I did not make the shot, I left my opponent snookered or in a difficult place to shoot the ball. She has to shoot this, the one ball. If she doesn't make contact with the yellow ball, Mrs. Dayful, it means I can take the cue ball, pick it up, and place it anywhere I want. I have ball in hand. Now, Audrey had a plan. But the plan didn't work. So now I take the white ball, and I can put it where I want to. I'll put it behind here, make that, go after the two ball now. Oh, that was a very good shot. No, that, that was tough. That was tough. That, that was a, a half ball shot. I had to aim for the edge of the ball. Now I'm going to pocket the six ball. As Willie Moscone says, I'm going to attempt to pocket it. That way, if I don't make it, then I got an out. But if I say I'm going to make it, that means I have to make it, right? So I'm going to attempt to make the six ball and get position on the seven ball there. OK, are you following this? Oh, that was very good. Now, what happened here was I was supposed to be shooting the four ball. And my opponent, my competitor, Audrey, didn't even share it with me, so I lose my turn. So I'll walk over here while you can pocket the four ball. Oh, it's a soft touch. It's a man's sport, but a lady's game. Oh, that wasn't too bad. I will pocket the eight ball. Now, there's two ways I can play this. I can hit the cue ball at 12 o'clock, which is like high noon. It's the Gary Cooper high noon shot. Or I can draw the ball and hit it at 6 o'clock, bring it back and get position on the nine. I'm going to attempt to follow the ball. You get the idea? OK, this is the game ball. Oh, I won. I won. I finally won a game. Finally, finally. Thank you for watching. This has been Three Seasons Fun and Safety. We've been watching Chris, the pool I shark. Play pool. And we're at the East End Belleville Plaza. Thank we're you for watching. Here for so Let's